Hi, everybody. Welcome for this new Jenkins infrastructure meeting. Um, so the, the, the major the major event that you may have seen um, on mailing is was we migrate the Jira instance to the Linux Foundation. So we did it yesterday. Um, it was a little bit harder than expected because we did almost the same thing that during the, the testing period, but for some reason we had um, database issues. So we, we had to, to, to restore from the different backups. Um, and basically what finally worked was to restore the backup we did for the testing um, one month ago, and then we upgrade uh, from that backup with the latest data from uh, yesterday. Um, so yes, it took us several hours to finally manage that. But um, the good thing is we are not now officially running on the Linux Foundation, um, which would which should reduce the effort to maintain that, that service. Um, so if you have any question, uh, feel free to ask. Um, the, main, the main difference right now is if there is something wrong with the service, we have to open um, um, an infrastructure support request on the Linux Foundation site. But otherwise, we keep have we keep our access or administrator access to the service. So um, it's almost the same thing. I mean, it's almost the same situation that in the past, except that we don't have to upgrade it anymore. Any question? So yeah, I think everything is said there. Um, I propose to move directly to the next topic, which was um, the Docker image for Windows. Uh, Garrett, do you have any news here that you want? Yeah, to share? I mean that's 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 pretty much done. I'd say um, I spotted an issue with the um, the host that we're building on AWS this morning, um, where the disk size has dropped right the way down to about twenty gig. Um, I'm not sure why, but um, uh, on the latest, so, so I've managed to tweak that so that it is actually running with a 100 gig disk. And I put a test in there as part of the packet build to actually fail if we, so if we upgrade the base image again and somehow get a smaller disk, it should fail the packet build. Um, so it's properly asserting that Docker works and everything now. So that's, that's quite nice. Um, so I'm just monitoring that on ci.jenkins.io before rolling out that AMI version across the rest of them. Um, and I think that's about it, apart from um, maybe a bit of pressure on um, adopt OpenJDK to see if we can get that um, PR merged. Great. Great. Any question for Garrett? Um, no, yeah, then let's move. Um, so the next topic is about the Azure, uh, our Azure account. So there are, first we have quite a good news here. So the Azure, um, Azure offered some credits that we can use. So it represents one month um, of usage, but yeah, it's, it's still more than welcome. And uh, we will use it um, in order to keep um, reducing the cost um, for the Linux Foundation. So, I mean, it's more than welcome. It was not expected, and that's really great. The other discussion happening as well at the moment. So, I have a meeting with Linux Foundation folks later today to discuss how we can migrate our Azure account to the Linux Foundation. So, the current state at the moment is I'm the owner of the, the Azure account. So, Tyler was the former owner, then I'm, then it's me. And so, I would like to, to transfer that responsibility to the Linux Foundation. And also it should, um, we are also looking at ways to pay the invoices in time. So we don't have to send a lot of email to ask people to, to pay the invoice basically. So um, I, can't, I can't really tell at the moment what will be the, the output of that meeting, but um, that's the current discussion happening. Um, I propose, any question? No. Then I propose to move to the next topic. Uh, we had issues today with the VPN. So basically um, the certificate revocation list expired on the machine. So we had to generate a new one. And so we had to, to, to build a new Docker image, publish that new Docker image. I don't have an easy way to monitor that for um, the future. And considering that um, 
it does not affect a lot of people um, because for more, I mean, it's many for administrator people. Um, we still have the time to, to fix that and to do the, 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 the needed actions. I updated the documentation, so feel free to look at it to know um, if you have any questions. I still have to update the, the list of people who can open the, um, the VPN uh, CI that key. Um, I, I was thinking to add Tim Jacob and Mark uh, on this. I don't want to have too many people, but uh, I think we should need, we need someone else than me um, who can um, modify, who can request um, and sign certificates on the VPN configuration. Any question? Hi, Daniel. Um, the next topic that I would like to bring here, because um, I'm almost um, done here. So basically, last week I've, uh, I've been working on, on a PR to guess parameter for the releases. So the idea is instead of uh, specifying um, parameters like worth, where you can fetch the, the codes and which brand and stuff like that, we use a branch name to identify which kind of release. So for example, if we are on the master branch, we assume that it's a weekly release. If we have a uh, stable in the name, then we assume that it's a stable release and stuff like that. Um, the code is there. Um, I also added unit tests for the Python part and the bash part using bats. Um, the only one that I'm not sure at the moment is which branch we could use for the security weekly releases because right now we're using code names. Um, so I, could, I cannot guess any information there. So this is the only information that I'm missing in order to merge that PR. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm looking for reviewers here. Um, and I'm happy that Daniel can hear my that. While you're here, I propose to quickly uh, have a quick feedback regarding the repo.jenkinsia.org status with GFrog. Daniel, do you have any new information here? No new information. Um, Baruch asked about uh, progress there related to storage. So he confirmed that traffic is reduced after we fixed uh, the tool installers for um, Allure plugin. Um, we haven't made progress regarding storage yet. Um, and I had a few follow up questions. Um, and he hasn't gotten back to me. And also, we don't have the new stats that no longer include a lure plugin. Um, so it, it's unclear to me who's exactly waiting on whom. But uh, it probably makes sense for us to take a look at what we can do to reduce storage space. And the problem I have right now is mostly around, um, I delete stuff, especially from the repo one caches uh, that appear unused. How can we fix the problem if it turns out that they're actually, that they were actually used for something uh, unusual? Um, that's that's the problem that I currently have, um, and it. I mean, there are a few strategies, uh, but I think uh, JFrog wouldn't be too happy if I started downloading everything that I will delete just before I'm deleting it, uh, because that will cause additional traffic, and so that's a weird situation right now because. I have no idea what we can be confident, uh, can, what can be deleted. Would it make sense to, to deploy just a machine? Um, I mean, not publicly. Um, I mean, just to do, I mean, a copy of repo.jenkins.org. Not, not in the purpose to, 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 to provide the content, but just as a as backup, as a fallback situation. Right, so um, that's also something I'd considered and the problem is, um, or uh, it would even be possible to sort of do this inside our defectory directly, but I have no idea how feasible it is to copy a repository with millions of artifacts inside our defectory. 
uh, or whether I'm taking the entire thing down if I click that button. Um, and since I hadn't gotten uh, a response yet from Baruch about something related to uh, scrapers, because that's also something we're dealing with, um, I haven't uh, yet had an opportunity to ask him about the feasibility of something like that. Gotcha. Uh, specifically about scrapers, the problem there is um, the idea is just delete everything that hasn't been downloaded in, say, a year or something. Problem is that surprisingly little, because some clowns uh, actually, you know, wget-r and uh, download the entire thing, which means uh, far less is uh, unused or, or uh, not downloaded for a long period of time than we would expect. So yeah. that makes that's an additional complication there. Is it possible to so, block? That? Pardon? Is it possible to block that recursive download? Well, how, how how do you distinguish someone? How do you do you distinguish abusive behavior from just you know a Maven build? That's a clean Maven build and abusive behavior probably look exactly alike. So, I'm sorry, the irony of what you just said, Daniel, is a thing of beauty. Thank you very much. That was, <laughs> how do you distinguish the difference between Maven build and abuse? Thank you. I appreciate That's it. Same. Okay. So, in the end, we still have some news regarding GFRAC Artifactory. Thanks, Daniel, for that. Now, Daniel, there had been discussions about incrementals being possibly expired, even if they were referenced, is that also unsafe? Or so, is that not, not appreciable in terms of volume? I don't know how, how much it is. So uh, if you remember what Baruch told us about um, his expectations, he wants uh, us to limit our defectory to legitimate uses. And incrementals is a legitimate use. Okay. Right. So I could wipe the snapshots and just tell everyone to just rebuild whatever PR it is uh, that they need a snapshot for or an incremental and move on. So with snapshots and incremental, I could have some consequences that we don't need it. Similarly, there are uh, private repositories in our defectory called cert incrementals and cert snapshots which are essentially the same thing as their public counterparts, but for the Jenkins security team, which is another 100 or 200 gigabytes or so. But um, this does not actually accomplish the goal as Baruch described it, because um, we would reduce the storage space for the legitimate uses. And so that's, that's why I hesitate to do that, because if he's saying, well, that's great, but that's not what we were asking for, um, then we haven't actually accomplished anything. So we can probably look into deleting old snapshots and old incrementals um, just as regular cleanup um, if they haven't been downloaded again in several months or more than a year or something. Um, but that's not actually solving the problem that we have and what uh, JFrog expect us to, to do. Thanks, Thank you. Daniel. Thanks for the clarity. Um, there is another topic that I would like to, to briefly talk, um, and I did not listed here is the acceptance test hardness. So those are using a lot of resources on CI.jenkins.io. And I'm just wondering how we could um, either reuse those or maybe do you have any suggestions on this topic? So the, the, main, the, main, the, the, the main reason why I'm, I'm raising this is because CI.jenkins.io is not only used by those tests and those tests that takes between seven and nine hours to complete. Um, and so when we trigger several PRs about uh, 
with those tests, uh, we just use a lot of capacity, which delays certain uh, jobs like the plugin sites and other um, things. Um, so I'm just I'm just wondering if we really have to run those those tests. And I've explored that question with James Nord, and he's quite quite strong that yes, they are a significant help to him. Um, I am still continuing as the reaper of acceptance test harness jobs as necessary to get to reclaim ci.jenkins.io. My thought was we consider since Red Hat had been executing the uh, ATH inside their infrastructure and won't be when Oliver Goncha steps down as release officer, we have to plan to take the ATH execution into the Jenkins project but possibly consider a separate cluster in Kubernetes that is dedicated to ATH or a separate, a separate Jenkins instance. I'm, I'm happy to start that conversation in the mailing list if that's okay with others. I'm not, I'm not sure what would be the benefits to use a separate Jenkins instance for that, but I think we should definitely use specific agent for that. So we do not reuse um, agent for other purposes. So, Sorry, the way, real yeah. quick to clarify, um, there is a very long-standing complaint by Jesse and others that the weekly ATH runs uh, take up all of the executors for probably an entire day because of the number of open pull requests of Jenkins. Is that what, what this is about or you, are you talking about dollars? Well, so for me, it's, 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 I'm talking about the jobs under infra slash acceptance test harness. Right. But the question is <laughs> this problem that uh, this Jenkins instance doesn't build anything else while ATH builds are running, or is the problem that this consumes so much money in our Azure account uh, on periodically? Both, basically, both. Uh, I think it's just it's just more annoying now because it affects the other job, but it doesn't make sense to keep building those. Um, I know that there, there is a long-standing um, discussion about this one. I mean, there is a ticket where basically Jesse and Tyler were, did not agree on the best way to solve this. Um, and I don't have strong opinion uh, on this ticket, so I, I'm not... Neither. I mean, I, I think I understand both both person. I, I think I understand Jesse and and Tyler as well. I'm just. Uh, Didn't James fix the eight hour runtime? Wasn't it to do with how the jobs were being balanced, or has he not managed to fix that? No, unfortunately, it's his his analysis showed that yes, there were some there was some unnecessary duplication, but that was not a significant contributor. The most recent builds are still showing about that same duration and. One solution is just allocate more high mem high mem AWS instances, but that's that's an expensive solution. It's something that I've done mm -hmm. recently, and it, it increases our cost temporarily while they run, and then we fall back to not having that high cost. We need we need to have this green. I mean, we've got like a hundred regular. They're, they're very they're quite valuable tests because they catch. Well, some of them probably are valuable. Uh, real issues, but they're not valuable right now because there's so many failing. The problem is we are just increasing the cost in this case, and we are increasing our Azure costs uh, overall. Uh, we are we're, we were uh, going to around 8,000 per month, and now we are going back to 10,000 per month. So I think we can just increase the number of high memory machines. Well, but, but Olivier, in this case, the high memory machines that are being used are actually EC2, so I don't think they are affecting the Azure bill. They are affecting the AWS bill, but but as far as I know, they're not touching the Azure bill. Yeah, then there is something that I have to clarify on my side. But but Tim, to your point, I think the the ATH suite value is diminished significantly by its duration and by its unreliability. Right, uh, having a hundred tests fail mean people stop watching it unless they're explicitly experts in that thing to decide if it's, if it's valuable. Yeah. Unfortunately, my attempts to ask for some tests to be deleted uh, failed. So I'm still, 
I, I'm not sure how to approach ATH. I'm happy to delete merge, click merge on deleting tests. <laughs> okay, I'll, I may repropose those then because there are a number of tests of a certain plugin that I am already confident they are well enough tested in the unit in the in the plugins development. There isn't a lot of gain by checking them through Selenium. The, the main gain that you have having them in ATH is that you can test them in, in new new builds of, of core. So if you've got a new weekly or Altex version coming, then that suite can get run. Yeah, for me, it's the, the rate of finding problems in ATH is much, much lower than the rate of having false failures that I have to go decode. Why did this fail when it shouldn't have? Yeah, well, we're finding real issues in there, but we find that normally okay. find them not that have been fixed or a long time later than they should have. Okay. So, yeah, that was value is low because they're failing to me anyway. It needs to be a green suite. So it sounds like we don't have, we can't find an agreement right right now on this topic. So I propose to, to to do some investigation for the next meeting next next week and try to see if we can come with a, a good option. And possibly one one of the options is removing some of the tests. But it requires someone to go through, look at the failing tests and and other ones to remove some that aren't so valuable, especially if there's any time consuming ones. Any other topic that you want to bring here? Um, I just have one last reminder before we, we finish the, um, the meeting. Um, I just received an email for the election, so it's, it's time to vote for it. So don't forget about that. Um, any other last minute topic? We have five minutes before um, the end. We still have some time. So yeah, if nobody's, if nothing else needs to be discussed here, I propose, I propose to go back to RC. So I go to three, one, two, three. Thanks for your time and see you on RC. Let's see you, bye.